Well, we've been having fun. We have. This week, we're getting a glimpse into the world of Xbox mods, the dark side, people who have modified their Xbox to do all sorts of wacky fun things. stuff. Yesterday, Kevin helped us to understand the world of mod chips. These are the chips that you have to install on your Xbox to allow all of this. But, you know, once you put in the Xbox, there's a whole world of things you can do with the Xbox. So back with a scoop on more things you can do. Our Xbox mod expert, uh, Kevin Rosen. By the way, as always, I want to start with a disclaimer that Xbox mods are not, of course, not supported by Microsoft. They can be, uh, it could be considered illegal under the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. So if you mod your Xbox, you're voiding the warranty, you could be breaking the law, and if you do it wrong, you could be breaking your Xbox. So don't say we didn't warn you, okay? So we installed the mod chip. In fact, this is a modded Xbox. Yes, it is. Okay. And uh, now, I mean, this is it. It looks exactly like my yeah, Xbox. Yeah, you, you turn it on and nothing's changed. Okay. The same, same interface as before. You can't even tell any difference whatsoever. So, what's, so obviously putting the chip in by itself is, is not enough. You have to right. do more. What's the next step? Putting the, the chip take? just unlocks it. Okay. Now it's time to put the software on there. Okay. And what we do is we get a program called Evolution X. All right. And you have to find that on the web. Okay. And then what you do is you burn it to a CD. And then you put the CD into the Xbox. A CD or DVD? Well, here's the thing. This is kind of tricky. Okay. You can burn it to a DVD-R, yep. and when you put it in the Xbox, it's going to work every single time. It just boots up and boots it's... Boots up, okay. no problem. You can burn it to a CD-RW, but it's kind of tricky. Sometimes it'll read it, sometimes it won't. Okay. So I've tried... It took me probably about 30 to 40 tries to get it to read it. What do you mean? You have to put it in, try it, turn it on, Eject, turn it off? turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. It's a pain... But that's the only way to do it unless you have a DVD burner. And where do you get this Evolution X? You said on the web. Is it, are there, is it public domain software? Is it, it they don't charge available? for it. It's yeah. not really widely available. You have to find it on like a news group or message it's boards. Away. It's hidden away. Okay, interesting. Uh, and that's because I guess they're worried that Microsoft's going to, along with that, as come they have on the mod yeah. chips, come after the, uh, the software. For sure. So can we show it? Do we have sure. it installed in here? Well, what I'll do is I'll turn off the Xbox and flip this little switch up here. This is the mod disable chip that we talked about, uh, switch we talked about yesterday. That will enable the mod uh, chip you once I flip it, it up. Okay. And you see the Xbox powers up just like it normally would. Looks, looks like the same. And except instead of my, saying Microsoft at the bottom here, it's going to say the name of the mod chip. Okay. That might be one thing Microsoft might like. like. Okay. So that's, uh, this is the, uh, that's the chip. This right. is not the software that's running. Correct. Right. That's the chip. Here's yeah. the software. This is the software. This, this is, is called Evo X or Evolution X. Correct. Evolution X. And this, this is, is completely replaced. Is it like a new operating system? It is. It's, it's basically like an entirely new operating system. Okay. This is basically going to allow you to launch third-party applications, games, back that you have backed up, things of that nature. Like with the other interface, there was no menu to launch right. any type of you other application. You could do any of that stuff. Exactly. This, do I have to always boot from the DVD or what? Well, once you put the disk in yeah. and you boot into this interface, yeah. it's going to enable an FTP server. So there's FTP running on this right now. So you can FTP in and copy the files from the disk in the Xbox over to the hard drive. Because it has an Ethernet port, I just plug it into the Ethernet exactly. port to my, my hub, and I'm, I'm on. You're online. Okay. Uh, and then you then you will copy the files off of here? Or? Off of the DVD. So you can see the DVD as another drive? It's and just, you can just, just the transfer. D drive, just like in your normal computer. Got it. And you just transfer them over to the main hard drive. Correct. Got it. And then it'll boot without the DVD from then on. It exactly. The you can take the disc out and no problem whatsoever. Okay. It'll just boot like is there, is there any? Do you have to change the uh, boot sector? I mean, the, the master boot record or anything? No, like nothing that? like that. Just drag the files over. See, what happens is the mod chip looks for Evolution X. Oh, it's looking to see if it's, it's on there. It's looking to see if it's on there. If it's not on there, it'll boot the normal Microsoft. If it is, it boots into Evolution so, X. So give us a little tour of Evolution X. First thing to let you know is that every option here is defined in an INI file. So these can be completely rearranged or reordered any way you like. Okay. If we go into the launch nice. menu here, yeah, it's really nice if you want to make I'm custom menus. I don't know who these people are, but I'm amazed at the amount of effort and uh, they put into this stuff. I mean, this is good oh, software. It's great software. You go into the uh, application launch menu here, you see this is the games that I have backed up. So you can copy the games off the DVD onto the hard drive. We'll show you how to do that. We'll show you later this week. What, uh, what, what kind of apps? These are the applications here. X Commander is like an old Norton Commander. Uh, this is the DVD software, so you can play DVDs on your Xbox, any region DVDs that you like. You mean I don't need that DVD dongle that Microsoft no. sells? No, you know, they sell that uh, $30 with a remote. You don't need that at all. You can control it with a controller. Oh, interesting. And you can also play PAL DVDs, which is really cool, because there's some really cool foreign films in PAL. You have to have a PAL uh, TV, though, in order to, to play <laughs> okay. this as well. All right. Uh, also, MAME. Now, you know MAME. MAME, you we play on the PC. Mame. It's an arcade emulator. Oh, you play Donkey Kong, oh. Pac-Man, all the old... The best. The best old arcade right. titles are all on it MAME. It would be fun to play arcade games on this. Well, think so, about it. you got the controller just like you would. Is like it a special you... version of MAME for the yes, Xbox? Yes, especially okay. compiled for the Again, Xbox. Again, you have to find that. It's probably not widely available. Yeah, no. MAME right. doesn't have it on their site, okay. but they've recompiled it for you. Okay. Uh, this, this is, is a complete underground. Obviously, there's a lot of people 
writing software here. Oh, I'm a sure lot there's of hundreds of programmers, definitely. That's interesting, yeah. So this is the FTP client here. Now, this is so you can transfer files to and from your friends. It's actually a server. It's a server and a client as well, oh, so that you can connect to your friend's Xbox. And let's say your friend has some good saved games that you like. He's really far, and you don't want to spend the time. You can transfer those saved games between them. So this is visible on the machines. network as an FTP server. Yes. If I don't firewall it off, obviously. I uh -huh. put a, wow, it's an FTP server. This is the Xbox Media Player. Now, this, I would have to say, is the coolest app for the Xbox, hands down. It can play your MP3 files. It can play all your movie files. It can uh, it can play your pictures, all your all your pictures from your digital camera. Oh, that's interesting. It's really cool. We'll show it's that later this week. I would imagine. I'm betting that Microsoft has built that capability into the Xbox anyway. Well, I'm thinking they're, they're gonna, thinking down the road. Down that's the what road. Do with but it. these programs are unleashing the power of the Xbox interesting. now. Interesting. Very interesting. So we'll go back in and here. And once again, I'm sure Microsoft's not thrilled about that. Oh no, they they, they want to wait until the next version of the Xbox right. thing, charge more right. money, and obviously right. make money off it. Um, you can launch your standard Microsoft dashboard here. Also, let's go into our system utilities. This is really cool. If we go into the settings here, this right here is where all your network settings are. So it shows your IP address. You can set it like you were saying, whether you want a stack IP address or not. Here's the different hard drive. Uh, so you could use a DHCP if you had a router, or you could use, set a static IP address. Yeah, I, I use it like a little internal. I give mine internal so the outside world can't see it. These are all the drives? These are all the drives. That's all the partitions. C-E-F-X-Y-Z. Uh -huh. Uh, interesting. Why do they? It's odd that they'd have an X Y Z, not a C E F G H I. Yeah, they. they I don't know why do, they do came up with that. Do we know what's on these partitions? We do. The C drive contains all the operating system. Mm -hmm. The E drive is where all your backed up games and saved files are. Okay. I shouldn't say backed up games, just your save files. Your F drive is where you store all your applications and your backed up games. It's, uh, my, it's good. Microsoft's practicing good hygiene. I wish more end users do this. They're keeping their operating system and data. Oh, it's all nice and clean separate. and separated. That's well done. That's yeah. the way to do it for Interesting. sure. Interesting. All right. And then the X, Y, and Z, I really couldn't tell you what those are for. Huh. Uh, nobody really knows. Secret. Microsoft plans on doing something down the road Secret with those. Secret stuff, yeah. And then this is just your BIOS and enable your FTP. This is where you would enable it or disable it. You set a password. It has like a little built-in keyboard here, so you can. That's put a good idea because you don't want people to, to be able to log into your system without exactly you know. trash your Xbox. Tell not, tell it so you can get a terminal access to it. Is there? I mean, once you get terminal access, is there stuff you can do? There's really not a whole lot you can do. You can browse around. There's not a whole lot of commands in there. Probably for the developers more than the exactly. End user. Yeah. Standard stuff like setting your clock and, and things like that. You can also tell whether you don't auto want to auto launch games or auto launch DVDs. Whether you put it in. That's the normal behavior for an Xbox. You can actually turn that off. Right. right? I turn it off because that way I can go in and do things like back up my games and. Things right. like that. Right. Uh, also, this is really cool. Check this out. This is the skins for the Xbox. Anyone can create a skin for their Xbox, no matter what they want to make. Somebody so, told me there's a screensaver skin. There is a screensaver skin. Somebody emailed it to me. They have to email it to me again. I think I lost is it. Is it somehow. animated skin? It's, yeah, it's animated. So like the gear turns or yeah, basically you can put a background image and a foreground image. So I think they had us floating around in the background or something. How but, many? Give a wild guess. How many people do you think are working on this kind of stuff? Well, from the projects that I've seen that are open source, I've seen 30, 40 developers signed up to a different project, like a lot. The, the Xbox Media and Player. How many people do you think are actually making these, doing these mods and hacking? Well, the Do forums are, idea? I really don't have any idea, but there's thousands and thousands of posts in the forums, so there's a lot of people that are into it right now. And, and, and Microsoft's been very aggressive in pursuing the mod chip manufacturers. Uh, oh, I like that. That's nice. They, they say it's Microsoft. No. And they even have a little registered trademark on yeah. there. I like that. <laughs> they kept that on there. <laughs> very interesting. Huh. Well, it looks good, I have to oh. say. I mean, it, it, you know, it, even if you were just giving it I, this kind of uh, skin just to have a different operating system, yeah. it's pretty nice. Oh, it's great. Pretty cool. It's what are we going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, we are going to put a bigger hard drive in there. Okay. This so is a 5 gig hard drive. 5 gig in there. I'm going to replace this one. I'm going to put 120 gig in there. So you can put all those media files. Oh, on we're going to put like all that. kinds of stuff on all there. All right. That's tomorrow. More Xbox modifications for more information about these. A replacement desktop interfaces for your Xbox, not links, I'm sorry. Check out Kevin's, we wouldn't do that, Kevin's article at thescreensavers.com.